Hi folks and welcome to another look at Fractured Space from Edge Case Games. Now come on, hands up, who remembers seeing this last time on my channel? It was a little while ago, in fact, it was way back last November. So I thought it was high time we came back and had another look and see just how it's changed and developed over the last year. And boy, there have been some changes. Now, not only are we going to check out how it's changed, but Edge Case Games have also very kindly given me two full copies of the game, in fact the Harbinger package, to give away to you guys. So we're going to have a little bit of a giveaway towards the end of the video, but do stay tuned because that's coming up later. Now, let's go and see what's changed over the last year. Now, first off, if you're not terribly familiar with Fractured Space, it's a team-based action and strategy game along similar sort of lines as things like League of Legends where your team has to wrest control of various resource points across the map from the enemy, hold onto those points while they give your team resources allowing your ships to upgrade with the eventual goal of pushing on and taking down the enemy team's base. In order to do this successfully you have to work as a team, supporting each other helping each other out. You need to block the enemy advances and push your own side when you can. And to give you the tools to do that, there are a very large variety of ships. A lot more have been added since I last took a look at the game. And they have all sorts of different specializations. For example, you've got the close-up brawlers, you've got the long-range snipers, you've got fast damage dealing ships, and of course you've got utility ships. Ships designed to heal you and repair you and disrupt the enemy. Now we've already mentioned that there's been a lot of new ships added since I last checked the game out, but how else has it changed? Well, the basic gameplay is still pretty much the same, that's the idea. Rest the resource points, destroy the enemy team, take down their base. But of course, over the last few months there's been a lot of little tweaks to balances. For example, the flagship that you can see here in the video. When I last played it, I felt like it was one of the weaker ships. Now, it's one of my favourites. I absolutely love it. It's a close range brawler and it's been given extra tools to do its job better. But of course, the game is in development, so there's going to be lots of little tweaks and balancing acts like that that go ahead before it goes live. The biggest change that I've noticed in the game since logging back in is the change to the visuals and you're probably aware of this looking at the video now but this game looks absolutely fantastic and it's not finished yet. The skins on the ships have come along in leaps and bounds and I think they look absolutely amazing. The level of detail on some of these models is just astounding. And not just the ships of course, the backgrounds and space, the stations, the extra objects that have been added in like the asteroids, it all looks a whole lot prettier than it used to and I think it's wonderful to see how the game is developing and coming on and you can really see the work that the developers have put into this. And one other thing I've noticed is that they are listening to the players in the community. A lot of things that players have asked for have been worked on and put in or are being planned to being put in. Anyway, we'll come back to the gameplay in a little while, but let's just jump into the hangar and I'll show you a few other changes. So while the hangar does look quite familiar, from last time I checked the game out, I can instantly see lots of changes they've added. The first one that struck me is that you can now customise the skins of your ships. Here we've got the flagship, one of my favourite ships in the game at the moment, and we can just change its skin. Some nice options, and this one is the Goliath, which is actually included in the Harbinger pack that I'll be giving away. But it was only when I went and clicked on the tech tree that I realised just how many more ships have been added to the game. When I first played it, I think they had six playable ships, maybe eight, but I think it was six, and now, well, you can see there's a lot. They've been split up into three different manufacturers, each with their own ships and upgrade paths, and each manufacturer has a variety of different ship types. So while we've got a nice mix of close range brawlers, long range snipers, damage and utility ships, I also noticed they've added a carrier, which as you would expect, plays by launching wings of fighters and bombers. So basically there are lots of ship types to try out and play, lots of variety to be found. Now obviously XP is used for unlocking new ships, but it's also used for customising each ship in your hangar. As you can see the flagship, I have spent XP to unlock different uh, missiles, different boosters, different types of shells for the cannons. And it's not just the case that these modules are always better, they act differently, they behave differently. For example, the missiles start from different place launchers on the ship. Depending on which ship you're upgrading, 
Some of the guns may have longer range but less damage. Basically, it allows you to customise them to your preferred playstyle, which I think is absolutely brilliant. And it isn't just a grind to unlock all the modules, you get the ones you want for how you like to play. And it's not just the ships that you can upgrade and customise, it's the crews as well. You can also purchase or hire new members. And you can create a new crew which you can assign to a ship to give it particular abilities that you might prefer. And when you go to assign a new crew, you've got all these ones that you may have unlocked or purchased. And who's this gent here? The Mighty Jingles. Go for the eyes, boo. So the game really has come on leaps and bounds, and it's great to see the changes and how the developers have listened to the players. So let's jump into a bit more gameplay, and I'll tell you about how to get your hands on one of the two copies I have available. Now, if you like the look of Fractured Space, it is available on Steam. It is in early access still. It's going to change, it's going to be developed. So don't be surprised if what you see here isn't quite what you see in the final product. But it's coming along nicely, and I do like the changes very much. So you can either nip over onto Steam and pick yourself up a copy there, or you can hope to get lucky in my giveaway. Now, I've got two copies of the Harbinger Pack. These are full access game codes and they will be redeemable through Steam. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning one of them is just leave a comment on the video below. I want you to tell me what you like the look of the most in Fractured Space or what excites you about it or what you're looking forward to playing in it. What I'll do is give you all a week to get your comments in and then on Wednesday the 30th of September I'll draw two lucky winners using a random comment picker. Now if you happen to be chosen as a lucky winner you need to make sure that your YouTube settings enable you to receive notifications because I've had plenty of giveaways in the past and I haven't been able to notify the winners because they've got replies to their comments turned off or they've got their notifications that they've received a message through YouTube turned off. So, I've got a fix for this. I actually released a video on this subject last week. So, if you're entering any of my contests, always make sure you watch that video first if you haven't done it before. And you can check your YouTube settings are set correctly. So, if you are the lucky winner, you'll know about it and I won't have to give it away to someone else. Anyway, best of luck in the draw. And I'll just leave you with a little bit more footage to watch so you can get an idea of how this game plays out. And it does feel epic and big and it's very, very fun when you're playing. And the key to it is definitely team play. Support each other, look after each other and play as a team and you can really ride those games. Oh, and I'll put a link in the description to the Edge Case Games website and forums as well. Do go and check them out. They've got great tutorials on how to play the game, lots of information, and they've also got lots of news on what they're developing. Now, the community manager that I've been in touch with has hinted that there are some big changes and developments coming to the game, but he couldn't quite tell me yet. So hopefully, when they uh, do come out, then I'll be covering them on the channel. And I'm quite interested to see what they are. Anyway, thanks for watching, enjoy the rest of the video, and I'll catch you on the next one.
on screen. Now get me back into action. We lost the ship. That's it.
Maps back at 100%. Relocation complete. All systems green. He's booked. I've lost signal. Target's gone. The target's stalled. Intel reports the enemy's attacking the base. The fleet is coming near the station. Another victory secured.